This morning, this is what I wake up to. This boy is a carrot. What is? What would you call yourself? A juicing machine. I call myself Orange Orange Got Orange Carrot Man. Orange Carrot Or Carrot Man. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Actually, good morning. While I make breakfast this morning, I wanted to talk to you about a few people. So this morning, I woke up thinking about. Um, some of you may have not bought the GAPS diet book or Nourishing Traditions book, but excuse me, I'm going to cut my bacon while we talk. So I want to share like, why, where did the GAPS diet come from? And to do that, we have to go back to the early 1900s. Um, there was a doctor, Weston A. Price, not a doctor, a dentist. And back then, a lot of people died from root canals, um, including his son on a root canal that he did. So Dr. Price and his wife traveled the earth, traveled the earth as whimsical as that sounds, and studied cultures that um, were kind of isolated still. So they still had contact with the world around them, but they didn't eat that way. He studied what they ate and what they looked like. And so what he found was they all had perfect bone structure, large nasal cavities, perfect teeth. Um, so all their sinuses and their facial structure was perfect. So they didn't have sinus infections. They didn't have a need for braces, ear infections, etc. cetera. Um, in addition to this, they were all strong, especially the men, strong shoulders, tall um the elderly were not debilitated <laughs> they didn't have chronic illnesses no. the children were not whiny the teenagers were not whiny they were cooperative they worked together they didn't have childbirth issues so if you think about it if the rest of their bone structure is spaced appropriately they don't have a need for c-sections their body is built and designed to give, you know, birth. That's why, that's why we are designed the way we are, right? Male and female to, um, to unify, to make children and pass on to our next generations uh, what we know and, and our Lord and all sorts of things. That's besides the point. So he studied cultures all around the world you know, in cold climates, um, like Inuits and in Africa. And they all had these same qualities about their tribes. <clears throat> and they also all ate a high fat diet from animals that are outside eating the way animals are supposed to eat. Sometimes the cultures would have sourdough breads that they'd ferment and let the bread sit. And um, sometimes they were actually more vegetarian but the amount of animal fats that they got out of insects was similar to how other, other tribes that had, um, you know, like bigger animals, like cows or pigs or whatever, um, those animal fats. So even if they were vegetarian, they were getting all these animal fats and proteins from insects, which I know sounds gross to us, but that was, and they, they were healthy. They had no problem with it. We just are in a different culture and we can't imagine almost real life. We live in this fake convenience culture. So now let's flash forward to whatever, 20, 15 years ago. And um, we're gonna talk about Dr. Natasha Campbell McBride. Cause she was just a mom. I don't wanna say just a mom because I think moms are one of the most important jobs in the world. But she did not get her degree at this point and her son was diagnosed with autism. So I actually don't know if she used the findings of Dr. Price or how she came up with the GAPS diet, but she used this GAPS diet to heal her son of autism and then went on to further her degree. And um, I think she looked it up. <laughs> there was no looking up back then as easy as it is now. 
so she, anyway, she ended up getting her doctorate degree, whatever, in medicine. I don't know exactly all her degrees, but she's now practicing and she's helping other people. So she's helped people with schizophrenia, dyslexia, um, of course, autism, autoimmune diseases, all sorts of things that people don't think are curable. And she's helped them, if not be cured, I don't want to say cured, but healed, because I feel like those things are actually things you can be healed from. Um, she's at least helped them with a better quality of life. There's story after story, and there's probably many undocumented cases of where people have done the GAPS diet and, and had great results. So a lot of times people think that they cannot be healed of certain things, right? That's what we've been told. That's what I was told in my nursing school. You know, we have all these diseases, even high blood pressure. Oh, it's because you have too much, you know, salt. Well, the salt they're eating is probably certainly not helpful. Um, you know, table salt's just terrible. It, it has aluminum in it. I mean, and we wonder why we have Alzheimer's. <laughs> People are eating table salt every single day. Um, but that's a side note. So you think about like autoimmune diseases, right? They attack usually the nerves, sometimes the muscle the tissues in your body. I personally believe that we, we can't survive with toxins just roaming around in our bloodstream. So the body will put toxins, especially heavy metals, especially heavy metals in our fat tissues. Well, your brain is what, like 60% fat tissues. Um, so, so it's ironic. So to me, when I was having issues with my health, they were all neurological. I'd have seizure-like episodes. They could have been real seizures. I don't know. I didn't go get tested. I don't have the money or patience with the medical field. I don't really care. I don't need a diagnosis to, to know how to treat myself. I've been able, you know, God's given me the ability to research and um, just learn, you know, I just feel like he's given me many opportunities, um, thankfully, to not spend money and go down that route for no answers. It's delicious bacon. <clears throat> so, anyways, toxins are stored in your fat, right? They can also be stored maybe in your muscles. I don't know. Your nerves are created. The myelin sheath on the outside of your nerves is mostly fat. So why would it be that my body wouldn't attack these heavy metals and things that are not supposed to be on my nerve endings? My body might have put them there just to survive whatever exposure um, happened to me. But now it's working to like say, whoa, this isn't supposed to be here. Um, and this could also be you know, part of Roundup too. So glycogen, I'm gonna get back, collagen has three glycogens and two taurines maybe, something else, two of something else. And glycophate, which is Roundup, has three glyso somethings. And they go in to your collagen and replace the three glycogens that are supposed to be there in an unstable way. It's not the same way your body was meant to, you know, be built, your collagen's not meant to be built with this glycophate in the way of those three glycogens. Well, everybody eats Roundup, I'm telling you, they have tested Cheerios and it's in Cheerios. I don't know anybody that's not had a Cheerio. And people that eat cereal every day are like eating sugar and Roundup, sugar and Roundup. I'm not trying to condemn you, but I just want you to be aware, like it's everywhere. Um, and just taking baby steps to work the other direction is amazing. So, when, when you think about it, our collagen is in our heart tissues, it's in our muscles. How many childhood injuries in sports constantly, constantly people are having childhood injuries. And it's just, it's essentially we look at all these diseases and we just accept them. We think it's just normal, right? Because everybody else is going through. Um, but Dr. McBride has found something different. So I don't want to ramble too much more about different diseases, um, but I just think once you start having this awareness of like, oh yeah, we're doing this to our bodies and then this is happening. This isn't the way God designed things to, to move forward. Um, at what point do we own what we're doing in our life and say, 
we, we need to change. We need to nurture our bodies. Um, I had a hard time juicing initially. I just was like, why do I need this much produce? This seems absurd that I need to put this much of something into my body. But I also think that God gives us different tools at different times. I don't think ever, I don't want to be um, rash here, but in the history of the world, have we had this toxic load that we have now with all our medications and chemicals and um, carpets and everything that we have, especially in first world countries. Um, so I feel like God's given us these essential oils and and um, and juicing and, and cod liver oil. These these concentrated well, cod liver oil is very traditional. People use that all the time, but um, these high concentrations of plant materials to help us heal. He, they also should just be a band aid, not a band aid. They should also just be a short term thing. You shouldn't have to do them for years and years and years. You should be able to get your body cleaned back up. And then, and then your body should be able to maintain that. Um, depending on how long you've been under chronic illnesses or, you know, whatever symptoms. Um, so this brings me to my last point. And I know this is controversial, so I, I don't want to offend anybody. And when I'm talking about this, please keep in mind that I am not trying to underestimate the pain that people have experienced with loss of family members with the COVID virus. Uh, but I do want to point out that when we, when, okay, let's go back to Dr. Price. When he studied these cultures, they were exposed to outside things. They were exposed to tuberculosis. They were exposed to whatever else the general culture is they treated. Okay, hold on, hold on, I'm gonna start. So they weren't just like in their own little world, never being exposed to things. They were always exposed to things. You know, cultures and communities are meant to work with each other. So um, in my mind, I can see the fear that people have. They are sick. Their bodies probably cannot, even the, the healthy people that are passing from the coronavirus, I don't think they're healthy. What salads to me are not healthy. You need to have, you know, obviously you can see on this channel what I think is healthy following the GAPS diet. Um, so, <clears throat> but once you get your your body the way God designed it, and you come back and you, we'll get Leo in a minute, and you allow your body to work as, like I said, as God designed it, I don't think, even if this virus is man-made, I don't think that a man-made virus is more powerful than the way God designed our bodies. You know, it's it's really amazing to think about all the things that our bodies can tolerate and we can still survive. Now, some of us may suffer significantly more surviving that. You know, some people say our, our United States, we die, hmm, live short, and then we die long. Whereas these other cultures, they lived long and they died when they were supposed to die, you know. Um, we, we don't have that. How many percentage of people are just suffering from one thing or another? And I don't think they can do anything about it. They're looking to the government for answers, which is crazy. Um, when we have the answers like right in our local farmers. But that's okay. That's part of the process. You know, everything's a process and um, it's a lifestyle change and that's a lot of work to change habits and your lifestyle. So that's my two cents. I don't want to get too crazy about the coronavirus, but to me, it's very obvious that we are a sick culture and, um, <clears throat> we need to build ourselves up and, and, and teach people how to do that. I don't think... And if they're not willing, they're not willing. There's some people that are just like, this is hogwash, but whatever. They're going to have to follow their own path. And I think that can be really challenging. It's challenging for me. I get a little frustrated, but that's not my job. <clears throat> the Lord, they are in the Lord's hands. That is not my job. And I just need to focus on my day-to-day -day, um, tasks. But, um, so that's a, probably enough rambling for me this morning. I just wanted to share a little bit of the, that information that I've learned 
about Dr. Price and Dr. McBride. Um, I look up to those people and I'm very thankful for the path that they have paved for us and um, the healing that I've experienced and my children have experienced. You wanna say, um, always remember. Always remember you're the best. And? You're beautiful. You're beautiful.